known Nellie's work for some time, um, and I've, it's always troubled me. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, having given it a good deal of thought now, what really troubles me is this huge, I feel, uh, discrepancy between what I think the artist is aspiring to to produce and what I experience. Um, I think I think he's purporting to celebrate female form. Um, and uh, uh, you know and, and reveal it in some in all its kind of gorgeous sensuousness and uh, beauty. Uh, and, and connect it with some classical tradition. Um, and there are, there are, um, and this is partly why I think it troubles me, because there is a great deal about the work that I really appreciate and enjoy. Particularly, and I guess specifically, and I think it's limited to the work in Plaza, where there is this, I think, performative, Element. You see the man making the thing, you see his hands on, and that, that's the sense in which I find myself engaged. Um, but, 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 what, no, but what troubles me is, 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 is a sense that these figures are abused, they're mutilated. And, and you know, I end up seeing them as. Uh, you know, they have no faces for the most part. Um, and, uh, there's very little variation. They don't seem to need people. They don't seem to have a kind of humanity. They feel empty. Um, I end up thinking of them as somewhat aestheticized mannequins. Um, Aestheticized and slightly eroticized, um, and and it, it, it's a dilemma because I don't think that I don't think he's intending to to give some voice to his own misogyny. You know. But that's where I am. May I ask when you say that um, you feel his aspiration is um, is that rooted in the artist's uh, statements and what you know of him, because actually the titles of most of the works indicate an artist who's more interested in the human condition than he is in the female form. Many of them have the title of the word passion in the title. Um, one of them, uh, one of his drawings over there from 1956, uh, no, it's from, from 1998, sorry. Uh, Sister Juana, Chronicle of My Worst Years. Um, and I, I would never have guessed that he would have a title like that. You know, looking at it, it seemed to be something of a celebration of a voluptuous curve of the female form. Um, and then others have um, descriptive classical titles like Cariatic, which, which indicate um, an aspiration to something universal. So, therefore, when one raises the objection, they don't seem like particular individuals, they don't have faces. Well, indeed because they are, if that would be the case, if they were um, signifiers of something archetypal or universal. So, to my, my level of interest in them is, is, I mean, I've always liked his work, actually, and, and I love the way area artists and one craves for there to be a sculptor with any group of painters that one likes. Um, my interest is precisely in how sometimes the space between something kind of universal or archetypal or, or archaic um, intersects with a very contemporary figuration and um, body language and mannerisms that one associates with living in America in the 20th century um, uh, or up to our, our own moment. Um, so I, I, I come with some surprise to the assertion that you feel that his work is attempting to be a celebration of the female form. I mean, there are surely so many 
ways in which female form suggests itself to artists in general and sculptors in particular, or indeed the male form, that don't have to do with being individuals, being people, being voluptuous, being um, present, etc. That's a kind of almost um, humanist realism that isn't the only way and only reason to make art. Okay, that's why you're here, don't you? I'm uh, puzzled by your saying mutilated, uh, because walking around and ignoring the titles, which I don't think are very helpful, um, I found that the works I was most interested in were the ones where, and this has been true in my experience of Nair's work all along, um, are the ones where he does take liberties with the forms. Uh, like the ones in this room, the ones from the late 90s, um, where he isn't giving us all the body parts and uh, treating this in a, in a much freer way, which I think is what allows allies him with the Bay Area uh, figurative painters, uh, where he is using a kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, a kind of abstract expressionist gesture or, or form and uh, attaching it to a recognizable figure. So I'm, I'm less troubled than you are by the anonymity. I'm, I'm seeing this in more formal terms. <coughs> and when something, when the relationship between the painting and the uh, uh, manipulation of body, and in, in the case of that one, that added drawing of the arm, the twig, uh, when they seem to really reinforce each other, I'm more interested than when it's a more uh, complete body. But wouldn't it be known that he basically used one model pretty much for all his work? Wouldn't that be something that would have been known at least by for most of his career? That, so it's not necessarily like a female abstract, it's specifically coming from one person or the model is one person for the most part, no? But he's not being uh, that literal. I mean, it's a kind of generic slim body, what, whoever it came from. But then the titles do have her name, too. I mean, like... I, I just am not that interested in titles. You know, well, they don't well, tell no, me what I'm looking at. <laughs> no, and I understand that, that people aren't. But I think title is, is, a, is an appendage to the work, and it does say something. It's not null and void. No, it's also a convenient way of keeping track, especially if you're a very productive artist. But I think that we're only mentioning titles, not because we're enthralled with titles, but because a very specific biographical, intentional um, uh, note was sounded by Bath. And I think the titles um, are one level of which that's lied. The subject in this <coughs> show is our all, I believe, apart from maybe some of the heads, uh, female. Um, and that, my understanding of Mary's work is that that was his primary subject. Um, and so it's his attitude to the subject that is what is bothering me. Well, I, um, I feel, if anything, more disturbed <laughs> by these pieces that you expressed. I find it hard to get past the mutilation, the crudeness, the defacing, the, the angry treatment of the female family and or of his girlfriend. I assume she was his girlfriend um, or wife. And what I find particularly bothersome in addition to the fact that she has no face, is that usually her hands are either non-existent or have been basically cut off. Um, so they're so she can't act, like she can't do anything with her hands. And using kind of art speak to talk about mixing classical form with you know, abstract expressionistic gesture. To me, I, I just find meaningless gashes of black pigment on her that have no formal defense. And 
Curiously, in that one, they're, they're, they're illustrative, right? In the dark and the pubic area, and sort of the shadow and the breasts. But if you look around the back, there's a big splotch of black on the back that has no formal meaning. You know, and, and then they look scorched and burned and, and um, you know, like gouged. I, I can't get past that. And I feel that there's no, I'm sorry, I just, I feel that there's no, or very little counterbalance of formal interest to make it look like sculptures that have this, you know, challenging aspect. I don't find them that engaging as form. Well, I, that last sentence was the most interesting thing you said. Um, because otherwise I'm really puzzled by your, how literally you're reading this. And I mean, are you saying that any uh, elusive sculpture that doesn't have all its parts articulated and all the features articulated is somehow problematic? No. Because you, you're saying no fingers at the top. Well, I find the way these hands are very disturbing. You know, this woman, this female figure crawling across the floor with little stubs for hands. I find it disturbing. That's a very literalist reading mm -hmm. of these objects. And I don't think if it was anything other than females and humans, we would be worried about a 20th century artist using abbreviation and generalization and um, unfinish as part of his or her repertoire. Did this one disturb you? It doesn't disturb you. A seated female figure with her legs wide open and one leg cut off? I don't read this one <laughs> leg cut off. I, I read the, I'm, I'm not reading but the I find it disturbing. I find it very disturbing. I'm reading it as a formal choice, not as a literal amputation. Um, well, Karen, um, I think what, looking at this, these sculptures, I think that almost anything from my view that one can say might apply and might not apply. But I think that what a lot of us are, might be saying is that we're trying to follow the mind of the artist and what kind of decisions and judgments they're making as they deal with the content. Um, I think that you can read the figures as abstract or as mannequin. They have almost no anatomical articulation to pose. So when you said they're not really perceptual or done from a model, that's, that's no, quite obvious. After he but then there is something done, not during the process of making the figure, but it seems afterwards it's applied to the figures. And I could see it as being related to the photographs of Medardo Rosso, mm -hmm. putting chiaroscuro in them, which I could follow up with the color and say the color mm -hmm. adds to the chiaroscuro, the appearance, disappearance. But then I could go back to what Garth said and see the coloration, the mutilation, or the, the spatialization, which I see sometimes in the space being filled in, the spatialization, let's say, and the coloration. I can read them even further in what David calls a literal form because I want to know what the artist is thinking at the end, especially if these are the work of a person who's gone on in a lifetime of work. And I can almost read them, and this might be extreme, as a kind of ritual fashion exercise. Basically what I mean is addressing and undressing. Mm -hmm. uh, alteration, not so much of the interior form, of the human figure, which, but of the exterior, I could start to read the color as a, as a, the way one might play with a doll. Mm -hmm. And I would not be, mm -hmm. 
been shocked by this or an artist to be doing this. I, I would think that as they went on in life, they might try to deal with this as they, in their approach to the human figure in particular, you know, to humanize what they're trying to do. But I think that if you just say he took the color and used it in an abstract expressionist manner, or arbitrary manner, or formless manner, I can go along with that too, because I'm not quite sure what he's doing. It's slippery, it moves from one place to another for me. I, I think that's, that's the problem. I mean, I, I am not convinced by the color. It, it doesn't, in, it, there are a few sculptures where I think it does do something to the form or works with the form. I don't think, it feels arbitrarily applied to me as paint in, in most of these. But what I keep thinking about are the casts, plaster casts of the bodies from Pompeii which are generalized and anonymous. Um, and I'd be very surprised if you weren't thinking about that, too. Well, those are also all different genres. I, I think the question of, for I, when, it, when Garth suggested that we see Mary, and, you know, as I reviewed, sort of even biographical notes about him, I mean, I, I suppose I would always have this question, and I'm much more close to, to Sally's experience of these forms. You know, what, what's the construction of his career that required, and not so much his own personal taste, which I think must be there also, that, that made the, the female form the successful form to pursue? You know, and that's maybe a slightly cynical way of thinking about how these things get produced, but it's in the context of an art career. Um, which ignores the fact that he had eight children, you know, and, and actually did collaborate with his wife for some years with John Brown, who I had never heard of, unfortunately. You've never heard of John Brown? I mean, I have. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. That's a big hole. Don't right. fill it in. And, and well, you know, it's my works. responsibility that I miss that. She's a very good painter. Yes, but well, I studied art for years. Mm -hmm. It's never in any of my reviews in the 20th century, right? But that was not offered to me. Now that I know she's there, yeah, I'm looking. But how about it? It's not somebody I stole across, and I'm you know, almost 60. They're looking for So it's not actually my home. <laughs> right? It's the whole world to me. I, and I, you know, you know, there are some of these, these ones here that I find, as Garth mentioned, just beautiful in the way that, you know, the plaster is moving around. Even that scale feels maybe more intimate, like the doll that you mentioned, a little bit more palatable to me. That figure over there, as Sally mentioned, is, is the most, almost impossible for me to accept and look at, and not think about my empathy, not think about my attitude towards the female body. Why are we looking at him looking at females? This is always my question about this Why are we looking at this man looking at women? Yeah, forever. I think, I think you, you've answered your own question at the beginning. Let's yes. not look at his biography and have to look at the context in which he's working. Um, an artist of his generation, and Henry Familiar, it would have been something really remarkable and extraordinary to choose the male form yes. as his subject. And to choose the female form is, well, of course, you know, you're an artist, you're a model, model of women. And, and so that un the unexamined sexism of that reality is is remarkable and it's interesting, it's important, and we should all be thinking about it sometimes. It just feels maybe it's one part. It's one, it's a, it's a very, very valid and very important question. Um, but I don't think it's axiomatic for this exhibition at this moment. I think I think we should all go away and think about that um, as, a, as a very interesting, useful topic. But I think it would be incredibly unfair to this artist in this exhibition to to alight upon his life's work as the opportunity to settle that as I would, but I, I, I'm not saying we have to suppress that. I don't mean to settle, but I also think he's probably had that, 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 that a fair that, opportunity. <laughs> just par <laughs> parenthetically, um, Joan Brown, of course, was a contemporary of the, and exhibited with the Bay Area uh, figures and painters, including David Park, who, some of whose most ambitious paintings are male bathers. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's accept that he did not question that convention of, you know, using the female form as his subject matter, using a, a female model throughout his, throughout 
Brown is going to do. And, I mean, it, it does disturb me that he didn't question that. Um, what, what disturbs me is his attitude to the subject. Um, and, and, and I think what, 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 why I'm so troubled by it is because I enjoy watching him make these things. There's a kind of seductive quality to the way he's handling the material, um, you know, and, and smoothing it and attacking it and smearing it. And, you know, that is, that performative element is, is seductive. Um, and yet, what he ends up with are these things that are, as Sally said, that it's difficult to get past the, the image that he ends with. But, um, we would be way more disturbed by his career, and we wouldn't be looking at his work here, if he'd made very realistic uh, sculptures of women, or, and men, even, uh, with all their fingers on, and looking very happy, and um, we, would, we would not be interested in this person. He would be um, a banal realist, and, and in fact, the, the feminists among us would probably be rounding on him more severely mm. for uh, the literalism of his appropriation of these specific bodies, these actual individuals, by actually abstracting and um, generalizing and universalizing. Um, regardless of the problematics that go along with that, He's actually an escape clause from a feminist perspective, sure. Are we just saying in a roundabout way that we don't think these are good enough? Well, when you see to say David we're... Parks and his males, I exactly. said, it, it's an exception, but yeah. he's also an exceptional artist. Yes, absolutely. And there's a big park retrospective coming up at yes. that moment. And there was a show here. Hmm? And there was a show here. Yeah, but there will be a big, complete park retrospective that's in work right now. But I think if, if these forms were articulated in a way that, whether they were more specific or less specific, but if they were articulated in a way that we all found more engaging, uh, responding more or differently to anatomy in some way, maybe we wouldn't be saying this, that we thought the paint looked like mutilation. Well, you mentioned before that it was one type of women who come in many different styles of anatomy. So I, I, I don't know if specifically think, female. I mean, if these sculptures were And I don't think disparaging the work necessarily to try to find out what, it, mm -hmm. what the content of the work is and where the focus of the work is going. And I think, I find, as I said before, that it's hard to focus in on any one direction, but when I talk, mention the idea that women come in many different bodies, there's a, it brings up the, 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 the idea about individuality, mm -hmm. and Sally said something about their lack of individuality, there's, there's some meaning to that when one selects over and over and over again because this is a lot of figures, from my point of view, to be abstracted to the same point over and over and over again. There has to be some meaning to it. And to have so little variation, I mean, mm -hmm. throughout his, his career, I think, there was very little variation in the type of female. I mean, I mean there is an element of idealization Which clearly, for the author, is you know his perfect female, um, uh, particular particular body form. Um, she, she's a little bit like a, um, you know, some of the body forms that children have too. She's doll-like. Well, the, you know, you're touching on one of the elements that I really find problematic. Well, you're reinforcing what I just said. Which was? Which was, if these, if these figures were articulated in a different way, would we not, and didn't look doll-like? Are we talking about a failure of, you're talking about repetition? Are we talking about 
a failure of Mary's imagination and ability. Well, I think I'm playing devil's advocate here. I think we're talking about his obsession. Mm -hmm. And I think we're I mean, I think, I'm, you know, I think that what, what I'm witnessing is somebody who has an obsession, he never actually came to terms with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and what he's manifesting is the complexity of his relationship to the subject matter and, and his, you know, his anxiety about it, his anger towards it, um, as well as his, as his need for it. But what you're saying when I was young, the older artist had, which was change, change yourself to change your work, uh, change your work to change your, and change yourself. And to me, that's one of the most fascinating things about an uh, artist who goes through life and how they deal with themselves and how they work toward the distillation of, of what they are, how they, how they bring it to some kind of terms that are more than psychological, but perhaps even philosophical. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some artists that really stand out in that way. I find myself uh, in agreement with practically everything everyone has said to a degree. And I kind of can't weigh in on you know, some of the psychological, biographical issues. But I notice that almost every piece, as a matter of method and ritual, starts with this kind of envelope that's man-like or doll-like. And I keep asking myself, because you never see it for itself. It's always been reworked already. And I keep asking myself, like, what is that envelope? And why does it start from this envelope that needs so much correction and disfigurement? And it, it, as far as disfigurement, I think really as an artist, it's like there's hardly any figure that hasn't looked like one of these at one stage. And this certain level of violence is endemic to modeling. It's like in the, our era, modeling is roughly half and half establishing a figure and, and disfiguring a figure. So that doesn't bother me necessarily in itself, but I do see this thing of starting from something, breaking it down, piecing it back together to a degree, and using the paint as, in part as its way to uh, indicate I've accommodated myself, assimilated myself to this part of the envelope, and now you'll watch me carve into it again. So uh, many times the, the, the paint is carved away or chipped away or hatcheted away. And I think in part of it, the color is an emotional hotspot. It's also kind of a, an indicator of time, or some stage, or something that's still restless and can't be accommodated. You know, there's something about him antiquing these. Mm -hmm. He spent a lot of time in Italy, and they have that aspect of being damaged by time, not just by him, but then it slips into something else. It goes back and forth from the academy. I, I think, I, think I, I want to sort of firmly come against this notion of disfigurement and amputation. Um, because those notions assume, first of all, a normative idea about what a figure should look like, and also it assumes that he started with something and then broke it down to get to where we are, rather than necessarily building up and stopping halfway, or stopping before completion. Um, and um, I, I think this is a very, to be honest, retarder way of reading 20th century sculpture. I, th I think that, um, this is a person exploring a language, and that sculptural language is not one that assumes you start with a, an archetypal perfection and build and scratch away from it, and it doesn't assume that one is aspiring towards 
uh, a finish which puts my mesis at its, uh, at its goal. It, I think we, um, while we can enrich a personal reading and misreading of the work um, by, by bringing these uh, emotional and possibly even sentimental ideas about dismemberment and disfigur disfiguration into the work, I think we have to give a little bit of leeway to the fact that he's a modern sculptor and that's just kind of, you know, doing funny things to the figure is what modern sculptors do. And I, so I think it's, um, I think it's, it, it blocks us off. It also, um, I think there's also a biographical and intentional fallacy at play if we say that because they look like they're uh, attacked or dismembered or charred or something, that we think that we, we assume that he has some emotional need to do that to a figure. That precludes the possibility of, of his making works that we can read in apocalyptic terms, um, and we, that we can actually bring a narrative to these works and understand some calamity that has occurred to them that is not uh, a result of the sadism of their maker, but belongs to a bigger and more interesting narrative, if you want to take that path, which I personally don't, but if you did, I think they're, they're very suggestive of, and I, I particularly like Bruce's idea about antiquing, because they, they do seem almost sometimes like archaeological finds or survivors of some kind of apocalypse. Um, and and in, the, in those terms, the strange coloration can be um, more interesting. My, my own way of reading this work is that it's a product of somebody searching with language and it, it, it almost every, not almost, every single object here uh, has a feeling of unfinish and a, and a sense of being in progress and um, a very lively sense of having come straight from a studio um, and being therefore part of a mind that's still busy with yeah, all, all of that I, I agree with. Mm -hmm. The last mm -hmm. percent, yeah, mm -hmm. and all of that I agree with, and, and, and that's an aspect of the work that I enjoy, and, and that I think is very rich. Mm -hmm. um, the, the question arises, though, to what end? Uh, um, I, I, can I, um, David, I think what Grant was talking about is another, is part of the process of working too. He said to start with something and then bring time or space into it afterwards. He, yes. And this occurs That's to me something we're very used to in, mm. uh -huh. in some very important works of figurative sculpture is the working from the inside out as Delacroix recommended. Yes. That you you know you, you you're on the inside of the work and you don't find the form or the result until after you have negotiated the process itself. Right. And I think that's what, we're not disparaging his approach, it's just that this is something that is built into the history of figuration that I think is, is, is something to take into consideration. Yes, yes, I, I didn't want to mischaracterize Brandt's comment. It's just, uh, it was just the word disfigurement and dismemberment. Um, you think that they're not well, 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 the barbarians have arrived. Right. But, but I think, I think Brad's <coughs> comment about uh, starting with an envelope um, is part of what I was thinking about when I was thinking about the cast of, of the Pompeii figures. I mean, he's not the only uh, uh, 20th century sculptor who's thought about those. There's a whole raft of Italian figures and sculptors who are clearly alluding to them. Uh, but it's that sense of having become started with or these originally having been a fairly neutral, uh, generalized image of the body, which has then been worked on in some way. I, I am rejecting the word attacked. Um, so, well, I just was wondering, I mean, they're both, they're both modeled and sculpted and cut into. So it's not just one process that we're talking about, right? Because there are choices being made uh, with, with all the, with, with all the, with, with every movement, so to speak, within the sculpture is a choice, right? Like, that you have a choice to cut into something that you've just modeled in order to 
I wonder what make what point, right? Some of them, some of them, I see that maybe are playing with abstraction, and some of them, I don't see them playing with abstraction enough. If that's what he is to, trying to do, I don't see it as something that is that is moving. Is moving. It might be nodding to it, but not moving that that much far to it. I also just wanted to say that I don't think. You know, my experience of looking at this, or Sally's, you know, as women sculptors, but also just as women and as mothers, which I think there's, some, there's something to do with that as well, that it's not about a feminist category that, that is, you know, imposing a sort of knee-jerk response to these figures. I think it's a physical response, standing in front of them. You know, there are moments, like over here, when I... I feel that knee as actually my knee, especially since I had my knees operated, you know. That he, there, is, there are moments when um, I identify with these figures beyond them being dolls. Um, you know, that, that he touches into the, the, the articulation of the bone under the skin and the flesh, and I, I feel that. So I, I am invited to identify, and, and then, you know, my experience, particularly of that piece, is, is, is horrifying. Now, did, if he intended to horrify me, fine, you know, he's accomplished that. But I, but I also think that this to what end has to do with reception, and I think there's more of an interest, maybe, you know, in terms of, you know, feminist theory, but also, I think, just an awareness of the fact that our bodies don't need to be other people's subjects all the time. Like, once you start to experience that, think about that, then, then th th that's a, there's a personal relationship you know, that one feels with this. And some of them are you know, somewhat ambiguous. Like you said, are they children, are they, or someone's mentioned, yeah, totally. But, but I think that can't always be dismissed as sort of irrelevant based on his context, or there is a reception now of these things that, that I think may only be relevant to the individual standing before them. We're not in a conversation with them beyond that. This is the conversation I'm having with them. And yeah, you know, I, I can experience all of these sort of um, ways in which it may not be pushing abstraction or, or there's validity in the way that he's engaging the figure. But then I also have to feel those other things because I walk around in a body that's pretty similar to that. Right, both of us probably. <laughs> you know, like we could be those bodies, and so, yeah, that that's I think for me where I resonate with some of these issues. It's not a dismissive, a dismissing of his context or any of that, but but I have never been uh, as interested in looking at Neri, even as looking at Giacometti. Just you know, there's something about something that I that I can experience and feel, and I'm not stopped from feeling. Mm -hmm. And looking at those figures, you know, he, he's possibly yeah pushing that, pushing that, staring us mm -hmm. to to feel something uh, about those figures. You know, I, I probably can accept that. But a certain lightness. Yeah. I just want them to go further. Mm -hmm. And the method is full of promise, like the ritual is full of promise, sticking with one well, person. Well, you know, when he does go further and does that, I think, did you mention, Ken, that there was something about the, the full figure that was more problematic? But if, mm -hmm. Going further, it feels like it's more, it's, it, it steps into territory that works even less, or it works in a more confusing way. Well, That's a very different sort of figure than the others. Is that what you meant? Is that I mean, by going further, what did you do? Yeah, what did you they, they seem more like open-ended beginnings than something completely kind of inhabited. Uh, you know, for as much chopping and cutting and, and you know, it goes all the way down the arms and then something close to I again. think that's exactly the point. I mean, they're not not, and, and I don't think you have to have a female body to, to, to experience that. You know, it's not. a funny thing, because he always has a complete figure, always with a head, there's always some kind of face. Man. Not 
Sure. The, yeah, I, I mean, there's only one base that's actually Because there's a base, if we think about identity, and these. I don't want to reduce it too much, but they're sort of all alike in so many ways, and therefore the room, like maybe the, di maybe the dynamic of kneeling or sitting face against standing, there is there's really, they, they look so much alike to me, and I don't know if that's from the fact that he worked from the same model mostly throughout his career, or that was just like this more of a stopping point. The what? The stopping point. Mm -hmm. Well, the stopping point is important. Like, where, why, why does he stop there? Um, but I think, and I hate to even even reduce it further. But as an, uh, you know, as an artist who talks to a lot of other artists, or comes and has artists come and do lots of lectures, they get trademarks. <laughs> they get known for doing something. And I, and I mean, that's not art history. That's not history. That's not necessarily what I would ever strive for or teach the grads here, but it's something that, that uh, is talked about in the market. And I, know, and, this, and I don't know what he was as a market artist. I don't have no idea. Uh, and I don't want to necessarily talk about the market in regards to this because I think that's totally going down a road that is to perdition. Um, uh, but I, I, I don't know. But the, Martin, it's not irrelevant. I mean, given that we, you know, that we are, we have touched on the context within which these things were made, and the market is very much part of that context. Um, uh, and, and I mean, but, 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 but it, you know, one of the things that, that I think I experience is his control. You know, there is there is a, a presence of control. So when when Brand wants the work to go further. I mean, I think that might be where, you know, one would, one would experience less the control and more the end product in some way, where it would have arrived at something different. I don't know how or what, but... I mean, the, 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 there's one piece here that I really like, and it's that, it's number 14, that figure with the trick arm. Mm -hmm. And that's the one piece where I don't feel his being in control, I don't feel him exercising 